What the fuck? Why can't I Wait, read it? it? Oh, there it is. Maybe because. Okay. Music box. Okay, everyone. Be able to roll a D. 100. We are going high on this one. High. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. No. I was in here last time, I'm so I don't roll. Ooh, 16. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Atris. Oh. Atris was here, yeah. You can roll. Yeah, Atris. 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 D100. Oh, fucking getting in my shit slow. Does it take in a minute? Not yeah, we were missing really. two players at the end of the last session, right? It's just yeah. a lot of shit I have to go through. It was Red had to yeah. leave, and then nothing. Oh. Poor radicals. I am in the wrong fucking game. Rip. <laughs> Swordsmith no village. Oak. Too, but okay, here we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Come on, Chris. Get to typing. I, I had to. Uh, I had to. I had to cancel the last session because this is the victory lap, and I need to roll for the victory lap. Ooh. Oh, ooh, roll. Yeah. Okay, uh. Forty-three rip. Right. What is the? Uh, what are we doing high yet? Yeah? Highest. Yeah. So... Oh God, let me see here. If you mind telling us what happened last time in the next. I'm just gonna go through it really fast. Uh. We brought the fortress back to the um, Indomitus, and they were just like, what the fuck? And we had a meeting with the chief and the mill spider, and I think we pretty much just spent like an hour and 30 just explaining like stuff about the uh, the castle, like the particle cannon and stuff about that. We also talked about the zills and stuff. They were just gonna take care of it, and we were, we were just gonna go back to the surface. But I'm pretty sure we also meet someone like called Archer, who was like the witness's envoy? Uh, what else? <laughs> I got. I don't remember after that, to be honest. No, that's where it ended. That's where. No, it that's ended. not. That's yeah, not, not where. It, that's not where it that's ended. Where it, no, once they teleported away, that's where. Well, no, we gave back the. the we talked to Thor a bit longer, it. and then. Oh yeah, we talked we, to Thor like a little bit longer. Uh, they we were gonna go back to the surface, but I think they were just gonna. Like, we gave whatever. back the equipment. He took us on his little ship, and we went to the equipment place and gave the shit back, and that's where it ended. The did big ship. Did we end this? Did we end it? In we this didn't place? give the ship back yet. We didn't. We, Not we, yet. No. We, oh, so we were being taken there. The session ended when you. Basically, decided upon yes, we're gonna we're not gonna go with Thor to hunt down the remaining zoo. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the stuff back and we're gonna go back to the surface, which was kind of cute because it's like me dangling the first time me dangling a battle in front of you, and you say no, we're not gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, Loki, I wanted to fight, but I also wanted to drink these potions. So everyone else like, everyone wanted to go back to the surface, so I was like, yeah, whatever. So yeah, we're about to go back to the surface. So. At this point, you kind of like stand in there. Um, Thor kind of like Chief Thor kind of like went away and is heading in a different direction. The giant fucking ship disappeared. Um, everything has gone back to a degree of normalcy because again, you're in a city in the middle of the Underdark, which is oh, not very normal. However, um, the day is yours, gentlemen. What you do? Um, so we should head towards the place where we gave back the equipment, right? Oh yeah, we returned all the equipment, right? Yeah, we no, we're that? about to, we're about to. Oh, we're about to, okay. Well, let's return the equipment, guys. Yeah, like, yeah, we're we're gonna gonna have stuff like that. Hey, we gave back all the equipment, right? Hmm? I'm sorry, what was that? Running? I don't know, like, you know, looking at all of your gas masks and shit, it's like, gave back all the equipment, right? No, not yet. We haven't given back the not equipment. Yet, no, not. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. So I'm just gonna like, what do we have anyways? Like a gas mask. Uh, we had like some potions that we potions. Yeah. We had eight anti venom potions, two vials of see beyond true, and each of us had a gas mask and a. Uh, we also had extra. We had a kit as well. A, spon a sponkers kit. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Wait, we took a spelunker? Oh yeah, we did. You're right. Yeah. 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 I think that's about everything, yeah? Uh, where did we get the equipment from? <laughs> I forgot. The Pathfinders, something I forgot what it's called. It's it's. <laughs> we should know where it is. <laughs> we, we went to it before. We should know. <laughs> it's pretty close to what was it Thor's office or the um, what the fuck is it called? The uh, place where we ate. Fuck. No, yeah, logistics. it's in the center. Uh, I think it was in the center. It was in some logistics uh, building or something like that. <laughs> I didn't <dance> I wrote. <laughs> So we head towards that place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you're uh, if you're talking, Ronan, we can't hear you. Yeah. This must have been like a mic issue or something. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, that was the last reason to head. <laughs> We didn't have the last session because the mic decided to give up. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> the mic broke. It's been nearly two months, or like no, no, <laughs> over. <laughs> it was two like, months. <laughs> really no, the last, months. the last session was uh, October first. It was. It's been almost... forty years. It's been forty years. Forty years. years. Yeah, 40 years yeah. Everyone's gone. Been ages. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, she. Here we go ah, again. Shit. Here we go again. Yeah, session cancelled. We're done. It's over. <laughs> ah, shit. Here we go again. <laughs> Still in roll 20. Yeah, he is. I guess yeah, he's just he's fixing going. some Discord mic shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Today, I, I was sitting. Uh, on my on my kitchen table. You're this hitting your what... kitchen table? No, no, I, I said... was sitting, <laughs> not hitting. Oh. I was sitting Damn. on my kitchen table. Shit. And this is what I look, what I saw. Did you say yeah. eating or sitting? Eating. Eating. You're sitting, sitting on okay. Your table? <laughs> Are you eating your table? No, I was <laughs> sitting on my table, not sitting. Oh, you're eating your table. Your dog's <laughs> bandana is so cute. <laughs> it looks so cute. Such an adorable little bandana. She's like, just see the dad, like, just trying to get into getting like that. Let me in! Yeah, exactly. Uh, bandana. that. Bandanas are cute. Aww. Yeah. What a cutie pie. Hola. Unlike, oh, unlike the absolute demon that is my, that is my sibling's money. Oh, Oh. You heard yeah, well, uh, let, let, let me turn your body. I hear you, but you're yeah. like, you sound like you're far away from your mic. Mm -hmm. Just break my volume because my audio setup is not good at the moment. Okay, oh. There you go, we can hear you now. It's, well, clear. No, I, I, it's, not, it's not a volume issue, it's more like you're just cutting out. Yeah, that's because my internet just cut it out for like, I don't know why. Oh. I thought the power went out because I'm like building a. An apartment building, <laughs> like half a block away. It's not that. Oh no, that's not the game. This is. Oh. Mm -hmm. Jesus, everything in the fucking universe is going to fire dead the shit out of the end. Oh. 
you know, okay, so where, where do you guys left it off? You're like, caught up. Uh, heading off to the place to return our equipment. All right, so, can we go back to the place? Wait, back to the place where you usually, where you picked up your equipment. Oh, okay, right there. See this person in the, uh, in the counter. I can approach them. Uh, yes, what can I do for you? We're here to return the equipment that we borrowed. Oh, certainly, certainly. Um, the name of your group, please. Uh, the Mexicans? Mexicans, the Mexicans, the Mexicans. Odd name for a girl. When did you leave? When did we leave? Yeah. Uh, that would be... Two days? Was it two days ago? <laughs> two, three... How long did we walk for? We walked for like a day fought and then we rested and then we were in the it's probably about two three days ago something like that okay right. you are yes uh the rookies ah yes the rookies <laughs> yes, yes. uh certainly um um yes so what do you have to be done let's see we have where are they gas yeah, okay, mask gas mask yeah there are Very eight well. anti-venom potions, two vials of Sea Beyond True, uh, or Sea Beyond, <laughs> not Sea Beyond True, just Sea Beyond, and then uh, the Splunkers kit and the masks. Yeah, that was it, I think. Yep. Seems to be all. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Got like so worse if so are the items. Ah, most of it seems to be intact. Okay. You know, like puts it all away, kind of like hands you over like a sheet of paper and sign here, please. Whoever is commanding the group. Uh, okay, I think I will sign that. I like to sign it. Okay, it seems to be in order. Well, thank you very much. Uh, hard work and uh, have a nice day. Yeah, right, you thank too. you. You too. Thank you. Same to you. All right. So you've back got like exit. Back to the yeah. surface. Oh. We go to the big elevator thing that we came down through. What was it called? <laughs> I barely remember that Chief Thor told you to go see a certain someone before you went. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. He did. Hold on. I think he told us to meet Kairos somewhere. Oh yeah, Kairos. <laughs> Where would Kairos be right now? At the office? Yes, that would be the administrative offices of the okay. city of Anonymous. Okay, then we head there. So you kind of make your way back to the, to the offices, which are not far away from the place where you just were. And you know, right there, the receptionist is. I like sitting down, she goes, like, ah, yes, uh, Lord Kairos is waiting for you at the chief's office. Uh, you can go upstairs, I'm sure you know what it is, and I'm terribly sorry, I'm very busy with paperwork. You see, she's kind of like digging in what looks to be a mountain of paper, like, she has like a bajillion fucking things on her table, it looks very, 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 very busy. Uh, and she doesn't seem too happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> So All you right. kind of like go, kind of like look at her, you kind of go up the stairs, and you open kind of like the, the, the way that Chief's office is kind of like a prominent place for the second story of this building. You kind of like go there, you kind of like knock on the door, you hear a voice, yeah, it's open! Hi. Open it. Open the door. Open it up. See Kyle's kind of like sitting with his feet on top of the Chief's desk, and see she walks in, kind of like lowers the door. Ah! Finally made it. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. So. Was over. How was it? Uh, it was. It was great. It was it not exactly terrible. how I expected, but it was. It was nice. Yeah, that's the underdog for you. You never know what you're gonna encounter. Mm -hmm. Personally, I hated it. 
That's um, yeah. I was told you got bit by a bug or something. Yeah, I was uh, implanted with eggs in my neck by a Zill. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. probably yeah, one of the worst experiences of my life, if I'm being yeah, honest. Yeah, Chief, Chief, Chief said something about that. Yeah, like yeah, that, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. S seven hour surgery with my throat open. Very fun. Right. <laughs> but I haven't been able to kind of know what's been going on because Chip's been going in and out lately. Everything's turned hectic. Um, so I haven't been told what's going on, really. But um, well, you've seen the castle, right? Outside? What castle? Wait, oh, wait. They yeah, didn't tell you? You haven't seen it? Oh, yeah. So one of the discoveries that we made. Um, whilst out there was this, um, how to put it, planar tra <laughs> traveling castle. I forgot the exact name term that we use. Dimensional fortress. Yeah, I dimensional think fortress. Yeah. yeah, dimensional fortress. Uh, made by the matriarchs, and uh, yeah, we brought it over. We teleported <laughs> oh, it over here. Yeah. Oh, I'll be damned! <laughs> ah, the old fort's gonna pay me again. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting paid? Because see, we gambled that you were going to make things interesting. <laughs> oh, I told, them, I told them that when you got here, you were going to make things interesting. Um, and he said, well, you know, yeah, you know how old people are. Um, but, but, but I, I told them we were going to gamble. We were going to gamble on it. Now, it's a thousand gold pieces. Mm. So now the old part's going to pay me. Jesus Christ! Well, hey, I'm glad we were able to pay out. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, yeah, we did that. And uh, you guys are in talks with the face spiders now. That's cool. I told that I did. I that was that. I was told that. Yeah, that they're pushing um, face spiders. Yeah. Is... Don't tell me you were responsible behind it too. Yeah, yeah, we were the ones that did that too. Uh, oh really? Oh, yeah. Motherfucker! They haven't told me anything. <laughs> you wanted to win his bet? I wanted to. I would, I would have figured it out eventually. He has to write a report or rather, and he looks kind of like outside the door. Someone has. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, it was a, it wasn't, it didn't take us as long as we thought, but it was definitely something. Oh, absolutely, it was something. Well, so you guys are ready to go. Yes, yes, we're ready to go. Yeah. All right. Got a lot of questions about, well, uh, what the hell curse me or what kind of my curse is? That, my friend, is something that you need to ask someone that knows a bit more about curses than I do. Do you know anyone? I'd say Ferdinand will be a great sound. <laughs> okay, well. well. I'll take it time. I mean, he's not captain of the Imperial Guard or anything. He's always a busy vampire, but if there's someone who knows about curses, it's him. I mean, I was told he kind of works with him. Hmm. Well, take note into talking to him about it, or at least trying to figure something out. <laughs> I was looking to go see anybody that has, you know, knowledge on curses, identifying them. Sadly, that's not me. I'm more of a, and he taps with his hand, the scabbard of his katana. I'm more of a uh, cut first, ask questions later type of guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's head on then. Ah, oh, and yes, kind of guides you out of the office into kind of like the go, going down the stairs. You see his eyes kind of like briefly glance. At the um, at the chief's assistant, as she is just powering over a mountain of things, she kind of like looks at him with like a what the fuck face, and kind of like nods and just kind of rushes a little bit outside. Uh, before we before we pass this assistant, can I can I try and peek at some of the papers and see what they say? Um, yeah, sure. Make a perception check. All right, this is my perception. There it is. Plus nine. 27. Okay, so as kind of, kind of like glances, you take the opportunity to glance as well. It's like a quick glance, but you're able to take in a lot of the information. I got all this like stacks of paper, like she's writing things. You see her kind of like 
touching her ear for like a second, kind of muttering something. Uh, what we're able to discern is a first off, she seems to be writing what looks to be some sort of report about something, the way it's structured. Uh, you read or you glance on briefly on, on things like findings. Um, you do are able to read Dimensional Fortress. Um, there is something else there about the Zill as well. Um, you're not able to make like syntax or anything about it, but you get a general idea from like the words you're able to pick up as you quickly glance and that basically she is the one that is writing the report about everything you guys found, or at least close to. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Kairos. And then you see Kairos kind of like looking around and he looks at you guys and says, um, well, we're going to have to take the tram. Um, yeah, no, uh, no fancy uh, thing from the chief. Uh, I am too um, in love with my own head to ask the person. Uh, she's very, very busy, and if I know anything, she hates that. So, um, yeah, let's find the tram and head over to the <laughs> You see the guy like, walking around, as basically, the, the way the ground transport in, in Indominus is kind of like structured, um, is very, it seems very casual in a way. You see tram lines and Smaller wagons that the wagons you're used to seeing in, let's say, uh, Ishtare or Sanhartan, they're smaller. And you see people kind of like in the middle of the street, kind of like as people kind of like walk in and some of them kind of like extend their hand and the wagon stops and they get on it and the wagon continues. There is a certain kind of like um, harmony to this. Um, very informal transportation system that it seems to be used as not just to transport goods and transport stuff, but also people and like people hopping on in, in, in what seems to be like at random moments there's no bus stops or anything. And at this point you see cars kind of like eyeing out and at, at that precise time there is a, a tram that is almost empty that is approaching and he kind of like extends his hand, the tram stops and kind of like signals all of you, hop in, let's go! All right, all right. let's go! You kind of like hop in. Again, it is not a formal transport. Uh, there are places for you to sit in, but you obviously see that it's designed to fulfill a variety of roles, not just transporting people. It's not meant to be a comfortable kind of like transport system and whatnot. Right? However, you kind of like hop in, the, the truck kind of like resumes its march. Chicago does, he is not entirely on on the transport, he's kind of like holding from what looks to be like a like one of like the, the structures of the uh, of the tram of the wagon itself. As his basically half of his body is kind of like dangling out to the outside, he's looking at you since you're all kind of like piling up in this cart looking thing. So, what's next? Well, hmm. uh. I mean, after we go to the surface, let's say. I mean, I do want to go back to Alba and take care of Nosferatu's, um, how to put it, accomplice. You want to go back to Alba? Yeah. <laughs> like Damien, immediate? you need to drink your potions, right? Oh yeah, true. You need your potions yeah. too, Damien. Are we going like immediately or can we wait? No, no, not immediately. We can wait for you. And then you? Yeah. Um, Lawrence need to go talk to Ferdinand. Yeah, we gotta yeah. talk to Ferdinand. Or at least somebody that's at least an expert on curses. Yeah. Seems like we still have a little bit of business here, so... Yeah, yeah. Yep. About that, uh, you know, we, we there's something called logistics, as in... We need to set up a transport, and we need to set up a chain to pick you guys up. It's not that, you know... You, oh, you can, you're right. You can leave um, whatever you want, so that's why I'm asking what's next, because... Well, after we get back into the surface, I am sure the Emperor would love a debrief. Um, oh. I mean, remember, you came here at his behest. Yeah. Um, okay. 
Um, how about you guys all have your things to do? Is it okay if only one of us gives the Emperor a debrief? Uh, sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. I can do it. I can give the debrief. I'm not. I don't have any specific plans. Kind of like, all of it. I just said no. You need all of you to be there. It's the oh, end. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, we can. I want to do the debrief first thing though. Just get that out of the way. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be the first thing regardless. Uh, I don't know. How long do you need for the potions, Damien? Three days. Three days. Let's say four days. And meanwhile, seems, meanwhile, meanwhile right. Lawrence can go and talk to Fernand those days or whatever. Go shop, yeah. Okay. Whatever. I'm probably gonna be sick. <laughs> Hopefully not dead. Yeah. So how does uh, four days until we head back? How's that sound, Kairos? Um. I mean, you're asking the wrong person. Uh If the emperor summons you right away, which I assume he will, uh, but I mean, I, I really don't know. Um, uh. Should we, should we should probably debrief with the Emperor first before we decide then? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that would be okay. my recommendation, yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that then. All right. First thing then. At this point, you know, like the car is moving on and, you know, as you're talking and whatnot, you arrive at the particular side of like the, the, the kind of like the lift station. You see two giant lifts kind of like deployed over there. You see Carlos getting off. All right. Let's go. All right. You all kind of like get off and kind of like at, at, at some point the car kind of slows down almost to a stop, but not entirely stopping. You all get off. And then the car picks up and continues uh, its way in another direction. As you kind of like approach the lift, which is on the north side of Indominus, you kind of like, looks okay, so let me figure out when the next lift is leaving. Uh, get in trouble. And you see him kind of darting off it looks to be like a small kind of like um like a building but not a house or like, a, like a small house thing the car goes in and then you kind of hang out inside for like a minute or two and he comes out and says okay good news uh the lift is leaving in an hour so if you've already booked us uh already booked us on on the way up also i took the opportunity to inform the emperor you guys were coming back up um and he told me that he will personally be receiving you um, back at uh, the landing upstairs. So, oh, all right, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. You, kind of like, you see him kind of like finding like a like a group of boxes that are kind of like set to the side and kind of takes his hands like, oh well, I mean, time is not gonna pass on its own. So, hmm. let's see. If you have anything to do, you have an hour. I mean, I'm pretty sure we settled all our, our business here. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's get the fuck yeah. out of here. Well, well, we have like one hour to wait. So. Yeah, we my, have my, one hour to wait. Yeah. My, might, uh, as well, uh, my, might as well attune a spell to my <laughs> to my hour mill, I guess. True, yeah, yeah. I'll attune um, what's the Shadow Vortex oh. to my crown. I'm gonna attune... Um... I'm gonna to um, identify just in case. I'm going so, to... you're basically doing your things. What are you going to do, Thug? Nah, I was just gonna stay here, but. Oh. So, kind of like you all do your things. You kind of wait for an hour until you see that that two people are leaving this kind of like um, this this house that is tiny house place building that is next to the two lifts you see two people living and you see guys kind of look back at them it's like all right right up let's go okay you see him getting off his you see him getting off like the the stack of boxes where he was kind of like staff you kind of follow him at this point you all know the drill kind of like you walk in the bottom of this lift, you see them using a crane to lower what looks to be a rectangular tube of some sort that is lowered, clamped into a corner of the of the lift. You would know that to be the module that they use to kind of like, you know, put people in there. Um, as they begin to load boxes into the, the rest of the lift, kind of like signals you to follow Karos across the edge of the lift, kind of go inside. 
you know, and, and at this point he sits down and he fastens his seatbelts and looks at the rest of you. Oh, uh, put on the seatbelts too. Yep. Let's right. Get the yeah. bag ready. Yeah, yeah. I guess get the bag ready. Uh, <laughs> do you do you have knowledge engineering? Uh, no. Lawrence does, so might as well use nope. it. Yay! Yeah, we, we did the seatbelts before, yeah. right? I couldn't remember. Yeah, we, oh, we did it right. Not all of you did it right. Give me a second. So, Lawrence, since you have knowledge in the rear and you've already inspected the device before, you're able to fasten it normally. The rest of you, uh, I need you to make an intelligence check first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me not 20. Give me not 20. Five. Twenty-one. Five. Intelligence check. Shit. Um, so, good luck. <laughs> Let's see how Tom is Ivan. Apparently, Ivan is Tom. Ivan is Tom. <laughs> Ivan is Tom. Uh, Lauren is gonna help him, Divan and and Ethan. Give me a second. Okay. We're fine. Tell you a check. All right. Uh, okay. Shit. Damn. So, all of you who got above a 10, you're able to fasten your ship. At this point, it's a device that makes a lot of sense. All of you who got below a 10, I need you to make a dexterity check. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. That's. I mm. oh, no. That is a twenty-one. That is a five. I got a fourteen. Mm. Okay. So Ethan and Ethan. Uh you look at the device and you kinda like, what the fuck? I you kind of blank out completely forget how you tie the thing up. Uh, kind of like looking at it, we're like, uh, and then you kind of like take the, the, the centerpiece of this kind of like six anchoring point seat belt, and you kind of like look at it, and almost by pure chance, or rather by deftness of hand, you're able to tie a couple of the anchorings, and then people are like, oh, you tie the rest, right? Uh, Divan, in your particular case, go kind of like look at the centerpiece, and for some reason you can't fit anything in it. It's like it's for some reason it's like locked for you. And in the case of Uthark, um, you all kind of like look at Uthark. He literally rattles himself into the thing, almost building building a tiny goblin shaped cocoon of like seatbelts and like straps and like the seat. You have no idea, like, there's like a leg going in a place where like the, the armpit should be, it's like a mess. <laughs> God, she got caught. Like, yeah, I'm looking at this, like, it, uh, and you see, uh, you see kind of looking at it, and kind of like, turns his head and, and says, it, this, it never gets old. It, it can never get old. It can never get old. It never gets old. Kind of like this one of you and just smiles and kind of like sits back. Oh no. <laughs> so, at this point, they kind of like, you see the one kind of struggling with the fucking thing. It's like the thing won't fucking work. And you see who thought very assured of himself that he is safely secure in the sea. <laughs> even though it's, even though it's the most uncomfortable position you've ever witnessed someone sitting in. He is kind of like looking assuredly that he is correctly secure. Looking at the rest of you, nodding, he's like, yeah, I am secure. <laughs> uh, Lawrence, mind helping him? Uh, might as well. Can I attempt to help with Ark? I'm fine. <laughs> You're fine? Are you fine? Yes. Yeah. He doesn't I mean, want help. He doesn't want you help. You know what? Yeah, leave him be. <laughs> leave him be. At this point, Uthar, like half of his body is kind of like weirdly suspended from like straps as his feet are where the back should be and his back is where the ass should be in the chair. But he said he's fine. 
Oh, yeah, it's cool. We can, we can leave them there. He's literally, literally upside down, but he says it's fine. <laughs> it's cool. Um, it's cool. Can I... He says it's fine. He says it's fine. <laughs> I think I, I, I don't remember how to do this. You, you want some help, Devon? Then I'm gonna oh, go help. Sure, this. yeah. I'm gonna help Devon. Should you want to kind of like it's a bit funny because Devon looks like what a caveman would look like if they were trying to make fire by crashing two rocks against each other. <laughs> he has a strap in one hand and the buckle of the seatbelt in the other one, and he's just <laughs> basically. Colliding one against the other, and they don't go in. You approach Lawrence, you kind of look at it. You realize the fact that the 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 buckle is actually on closed position. So you kind of like twist it. The buckle kind of like unlocks itself. You put the strap in. You kind of like show it to him, kind of like a, like you were showing like a five year old. Like look, this is how you do it. You put it in. You close it. And it clicks. You do it for the second one. And you basically help Ivan get tied up. Then, as you're finishing with Ivan, you hear a <laughs> like a like a ring, like a like a loud ring. And he's like looking at you. See, kind of looking at all of you. You see him kind of like lean back a little bit. Running back to my seat. On clinch, you kind of like run back to his knee. He looks at you, kind of like chuckles a little bit, and you feel the lift begin to lift up. Um, like a normal lift would, going up, because you're not getting dropped at terminal velocity towards the ground, you're being lifted up. Oh, it's man. moving like an elevator. Wow. Oh. Oh. like a rocket powered elevator yeah, or some I, shit. Yeah, I thought this was gonna like propel us like forward really fast or something. Okay, that, Ethan puts you aside the much, bag. You know how much energy it takes to do that while loading this thing full of cargo? Set, put yourself comfortably. Set yourselves comfortably. I mean, the seatbelts. He points at the, at kind of like the, the sign in the cabin that, that has the seatbelts thing, thing on. This is just for a precautionary measure. Um, you see, we were building these things a couple of times as we were lifting them up. The mechanisms weren't as secure as they are today. So a couple of the lifts kind of like dropped in the middle of their journey up. So that, imagine, can be a bit scary if you don't have your seatbelts on. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. We don't need the bags anymore, do we? I mean, if it drops back down, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep on to it. I'll just hold on to it, just in case. I like that he has like a bag. He picks up his legs. He's kind of like looking side by side. <laughs> At this point, it's like you kind of lose it all. We won't get comfy. This is gonna be another half an hour before we reach the surface. Oh. Hmm. All right. But what do you think? We're, we're in the underdog, and as the lift is moving up, you do see that it's beginning to pick up speed. It's not super fucking slow. It's beginning to pick up speed, but again, it's it's like, it's doing it's doing it gradually. It's not that it's like, you're basically blasted off into the atmosphere. We're not, this is not Cape Canaveral, and we're not in a NASA rocket. Yeah, so, the acceleration picking up it's speed. It's it gets to accelerate again. It's a manageable speed. It's not something again. You're not being dropped into the center of the earth like it was before. Um, but it's going relatively fast. Let's say it's 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 going like at some point it's going at, at about the speed of the ever rail, a little bit less. When it picks up kind of its maximum speed, however, at certain at a certain point during your travel, which is not the most entertaining, again you're just looking at. You're inside a cabin, and what you have beyond that cabin is, well, a sinkhole, basically. So it's not, not the best view out there. However, at some point in your in, in this kind of like travel, you feel the lift begin to slow down. As it mm. the speed begins to diminish, diminish. You do sense that kind of like you instinctively notice, rather, that you sense. Instinctively notice that the lighting in this place is getting to shift to a much more natural hue. Um, but it means that you're closer to the surface, and eventually you all make it back up into the surface as the lift kind of like <laughs> stabilizes itself. You see, Kyle's kind of like undoing his seatbelt. Well, we'll go back to the surface, gentlemen. It's good to be back. Ah, <sighs> 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 I missed the sun. Christ. I missed the sun. As you kind of like open up the door, 
even though you're inside you even though you're inside basically in a built-in kind of like cave entrance that is um essentially excavated into the mountain where the palace of of um the Imperium's capital is built in. It's like that place. Mm. Um, even though that is the case, um, you do kind of like immediately notice the shifting atmosphere. There is like a there's like a tiny breeze coming from someplace. A breeze you haven't felt in three days. Uh, the smell is completely different. Uh, the air is no longer loaded, or as loaded as it was on the uh, on the Underdark, and your mind is no longer thinking this place is full of poisonous mushrooms. Um, so it is definitely a change of this. As you kind of like go get out, you see the garrison that is protecting this kind of entrance into the Underdark. As you know, you see the guards going about their regular day, people kind of already unloading the boxes from this particular lift. As you all kind of like step out, following Kairos, uh, at the very end, towards almost the door of this garrison's giant kind of like draw door, or drawbridge-shaped door, you see a familiar figure of a tall kind of like, um, at this point is like a, looks like a, almost like a horn kind of like, uh, what's the fucking place that has horns in D&D? I forgot. The what? Uh, uh, Rogadin. No, that... Tiefling? In D&D. Tiefling. Yeah. 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 I just see that the, the Tiefling is a kind of like a, like a familiar looking Tiefling because the face is the same, but the, the body of the person is different. It's a, it's a horn kind of like... Um, let's say it's like a dark hue of like a deep, deep burgundy color. Mm. As it looks at all of you. But you immediately recognize the facial features of the Emperor. Ah. Kind of like, kind of takes a slight kind of like nod of the head to Kairos and to all of you. Welcome back. Thank you. You see Kairos immediately taking the knee. Your Highness. Kind of like looks at Kairos. How is Kairos? Well, well. Hasn't it been the most eventful? of journeys. Yeah. Eventful. It's yeah. Eventful, yes. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm sure you must be exhausted. So yeah. so for that regard we will leave the uh, deeper thing for tomorrow. Oh I'm sure that we have plenty to talk about. The Imperium is very thankful of your achievements. Indeed. I like to take some breath and say, Mr. Kyrus, deliver them to your estate, Kyrus. Make sure they are, they take the, they receive the proper rest. You see Kyrus still taking it at once. He looks at the rest of it as well. I guess I'll see you tomorrow then. I just wanted to officially welcome you back to uh, we appreciate it. As, as, as soon as he says that, you see that this kind of like different looking image thing completely just unmakes itself. Huh. Ah, that is is it like, is it just like an image he projects Kairos or is it like him? You never know. No. Oh. Uh, you what? never know. Jesus. You never know. Um, one thing I know the Emperor is really good at is. Well, illusion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You never know if it's really an illusion or if it's flesh. I'm guessing that was an illusion because it just oh. shimmered away, right? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Hmm. That's I'm interesting. Sure be, I'm sure he must be very busy. Well, you told me you were going over down there. <laughs> it, yeah. Uh, however. Come on, let's go. We have yeah. a carriage awaiting. Mm-hmm. Uh, go back home. And now yes. see the place that draw rich 
you walk outside of this kind of like built in cavern into the side of the mountain. Right, right at the outside, right where the, uh, the road kind of like down begins. And in between what looks to be a, a small army of cars that are watching over the place, you can see a carriage with a mentor and uh, with a centaur kind of like waiting for a few as a centaur looking nods. And Carlos kind of like gets on the carriage. All right, let's go. Come on. All you know, right. You know, the, carriage. the carriage heads down the mountain, the journey back to the estate, which is another half an hour. And at the point you get to the, uh, to, to like, you know, actual daylight, it's not entirely daylight. It's more like almost evening. It's like late afternoon. As you're all making your way down into the estate, however, you eventually, um, say, you eventually make it back to the estate, to Kairos' estate in, in Dominus. In Indominus? Sorry, in Patros. Oh, okay. <laughs> As you all make your way back into the afternoon, the pleasant afternoon and the relaxing, warm breeze of um, Patros' afternoon, or late afternoon, as you all kind of make your way back into the uh, state. At this point in time, you kind of walk it off at the front of the state. You, at this point, are also familiar with the Bit of a performance that takes place whenever uh, Kairos arrives to the estate. You see a lot of the servants around. You see uh, your Margie. At that point, you kind of starts away, turns away towards you, saying, Okay, so, I mean, particular plans that I should be aware of. Uh. I don't have any plans. I mean, yeah. I have no idea how to schedule a meeting with Ferdinand, so we're not. Yeah, that. <laughs> that's something we should. Oh, I gotta drink some potions. Not right now. I have to talk to the Emperor yeah, tomorrow. I know. I know. Okay. Well, yeah. that case, what's there to do? Let's see here. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Lawrence, you. Put out the get the tanuki wine now. Let's. Oh yeah, the tanuki wine. The tanuki. Gonna get high on yeah. right now. We're gonna save the kraken wine for whatever is left of the old, but we still have plenty of the new one. But let's do the tanuki wine today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <sighs> oh, maybe we, maybe we should go get Rocky. Oh yeah. We're gonna we're gonna mm -hmm. go drink wine with Rocky. I mean, I. I mean, why, okay. <laughs> why not? You know, I got nothing else to do if we're just going to be tomorrow. Unless, I mean, I don't know, is there time to go talk to Ferdinand or is everybody busy? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've no Kairos? Idea. Kairos? Is he here? I did it with a bot because the bot is... Stop. Uh, uh, can we, can we, uh, you know what? Can we drink some wine? I, I, I miss it. Uh, you getting drunk again? Yeah. Yep. Not letting fuck it. This is bot is not letting me play now. Yeah, we should get Rocky. Oh, is it doing the? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's you have doing to, the like, YouTube some videos. videos. Don't work anymore. Yeah. Yeah, some videos don't want to work for some godforsaken reason. That's because YouTube has been cracking down on this a lot. Oh, did it? Give me a second, so I can find something. Let me see if this one's gonna work. Nope. Do you have any other bot? No. It's nope. it's how it is for all the music bots right now. Yeah, I mean there are some songs that might work, so you could try a different it, one. If you check around YouTube for the exact same song, but maybe somebody else uploaded, there's a chance it will work. Sometimes. I can't do that now, right? No, can I? Give me a second. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
Let's see if I can. Guys, I want to chase the song. All right, so. As you all kind of like there, you're like, so you have plans? So you were going to get the Tabuki wine? Yep. Yeah, uh, yes. but uh, what about Ferdinand? I know Lawrence wanted to go talk to him. Can we meet him today? It's going to be difficult. Um, How? I feel like you guys should schedule a meeting or something. I mean, for free now. Why not? And again, Ferdinand said, really be this guy. Um, hmm. How would we schedule a, me a meeting with him? Tomorrow after you debrief the Emperor, I'm sure he's gonna be there. Oh, uh, well. Okay, that, then we'll take that time to talk to him then. After. Hey, could you, uh, could you find a, could you bring a Tanuki to the estate? Could we bring a friend? He's a friend. Excuse me? Rocky. Yeah, his name is Rocky. He was a, he's a blacksmith down in the, uh, merchants, or uh, the district, merchants district area. I am not familiar with who you're talking about. Uh, I mean, <sighs> I don't, I mean, I don't know, do you guys, I, I'm, I'm a little lazy today, I don't really want to go out, so. It wouldn't be good manners to bring a guest to a place where we're guests. <laughs> let's, I say let's just have a tanuki wine. Yeah, let's just yeah, have a tanuki wine. Yeah, I know Rocky, damn. <laughs> damn. Okay, so you got it all. Go back into the guest house. Yep. Or a bottle of tanuki wine and you drink the tanuki wine. So what are the effects of the tanuki wine? Uh, the effects are, I believe it does have a negative flu. One second. Yeah, for like, for like one minute, I think we're doing stupid. No, hold on. It's a... Uh... Temporary HP for one hour, and then the... Yeah. It's false life for one hour, and then the negatives is like a minus to your... I think it's minus one to your reflex and AC save for the same duration. No, no for one minute. It was... For one minute. One minute, oh yeah, one minute reduces AC and reflex save by one, and gives us false life for one hour. Has to be drank from the gourd, so... <laughs> we pass around the gourd. Are we passing around the... I mean... Yep, we're passing around the gourd. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Passing around the gourd. Alright, whatever. <laughs> you don't have to drink it from the gourd. <laughs> no, you don't have to, but I'd rather. Kairos, you Especially want to? Especially with me having, you know, negative permanent HP or whatever the fuck it is. It'll last for one hour anyway. <laughs> Uh, it, when you drink it, you gain temporary hit, hit points equal to 1d10 plus 1 per caster level. Uh, it's probably only one since it's one hour, so so it's one d ten plus one. So you will add the corresponding corresponding bonuses to your uh, HP, and uh, also be mindful of the negatives. Okay. As you kind of drink the Tanuki wine, how much do you want to drink? Um, just taking one sip. Um, yeah, well, mm, let's see, let's see. I mean, how long are we spending just waiting the rest of the day? Yeah, we're just, Argus is gonna fucking go to sleep. Oh, wait, it's late evening? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> afternoon. Okay, well, drink a little because we'll probably be drinking more during dinner. <laughs> yeah, Argus will drink a little bit. He'll have a sip. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a sip. You take a sip. It's um, it's a unique taste. Uh, none of you have, have ever tasted skin before. Um, it's got a pungent nature to it, but it's very sweet. Yes. You kind of drink it. It's it's like a best way to describe it would be dark red honey. It's an alcohol aftertaste. Hmm. It's it's possible. Uh, and you kind of take a bit. You feel a little bit invigorated. However, your coastal sense that your senses get a little bit dumber. You're kind of like a little bit sluggish, almost uh, 
sleepy, but not entirely drowsy or sleepy. It's kind of like that sense right before you begin to kind of like want to go to sleep. But it's a comfortable sensation, at least in the environment that you are right now. Eventually, um, dinner is served to you guys in the guest house. Kind of like have uh, for dinner an assortment of things, fruits, meats, vegetables, stuff like that. It's as usual, a delicious dinner, very invigorating. And eventually, the hours of the evening find you as you kind of take rest in this place after some very eventful days in the underdark. So you all go to sleep in your respective chambers. The evening goes by, you're able to reset everything. The HP bonus from the Tanuki wine goes away because it only lasts an hour. Um, and so, the morning finds all of you begin as you all come to your senses as a new day beckons you. So, what do you do? All right, <sighs> I guess first thing we got to do is meet up with Kairos, right? See if he tells us anything about meeting the Emperor. Yeah, I guess, well, the first thing we have to do is meet the Emperor, right? So... Mm -hmm. Go look around for Kairos. Yep. So you kind of like, you know, you get up, you do the things you do early in the morning, go out, look for Kairos. As you're going out of the house, Kairos is already there. Kind of like sitting on the on this kind of like garden that precedes the guest house. As you kind of like begin to make your way out of the house, you turn over. Ah! Thought you were going to sleep there. Well, good for you. Come on. Ah, yeah. <sighs> all right. We Sleep can sleep in. We... Hmm? Shit! Maybe. I thought I, I thought it was I thought it was like urgent to go see the emperor. Probably is. Be better if we went urgently. Uh... Yeah, whatever. Well, Let's I'll go. Both of my shadows just as we go. Okay. So as you kind of like get ready again, go back into the carriage and all the way back to your palace. At this point. As the Imperial Palace is receiving it, let me see if this fucking flat works. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Um, I will be back and connect to the real quick. Uh, let me check if I can find it. Oh, you know, this is the one that we just heard. God damn it. Ladies, control copy. Oh, this one's gonna be good. Either way, um, let's see if I can find it. First phase, first phase. And it's playing it off Spotify. If you think. Yeah, if you can find them on Spotify, you can put in the bot. See if I can, because I have them. I don't use Spotify here, so let's see if I can find the guy that I call Spotify now. Okay. This thing? Yeah, kind of. Oh. Sorry. No, it's okay. There we go. Okay, so. So. As you kind of like get off the carriage. 
you see an entire row of Imperial Guards. As soon as you get off the carriage, they will stand in attention. Alex looks at you and smiles at you and let's go. All right. And you all move on. into the Imperial Palace. As you're moving, you do immediately notice that the row of Imperial Guards follows you the entire way to the throne room. Make an intelligence check. Uh, intelligence. Ten. Oof. <laughs> 19. Nice. Also, 19. if you have knowledge nobility, you can also roll that as well. Okay, I got knowledge nobility. No. Nope. I got 19, though. 17 is here. The beach, the plus. Is the intelligence? Yeah. Or if you have knowledge then nobility. Then, knowledge nobility. Intelligence was 19, but it. <laughs> okay. That is the wrong fucking tab. Nineteen. So, as you all make your way, Ethan, you do yep. realize that this display is a god of honor. Oh. <laughs> and you immediately recognize this as a god of honor. As you're kind of like walking, you also look down and you see that you're all walking through a red carpet. All the way. As you're all walking through a red carpet. As you stand before the door of the throne room, times have been guiding you all this way in silence. The, this time, the, the door of the throne room doesn't open up like a tiny space. It basically <laughs> opens completely. As you see before you, the God of Honor follows into the, the throne room, forming up alongside the, um, the red carpet that extends itself into the throne room. You see on the distance the place where the throne of the Emperor is, as this is entirely obscured by darkness. Kind of like, you make it a second check. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 25. Eight. Rip. Oh, are we rolling? Perception. Yeah, perception. Uh, 19. Perception and perception. 15. Let's see, please, please, please be good. 11, goddammit. Oh. What is that song? Yeah. Shit is getting real, Shekel. So, yeah. you're looking into the throne room as the kind of like guard stands. And you can see that there is, like, basically to a side of the throne room as the doors open wide. You do recognize Ferdinand, who is standing there. You do recognize Chief Thor, is also standing there. He is not dressed in his habitual garb. He's dressed in, like, a, yeah, like, in the same kind of, like, garments as the rest of the Imperial Guard, which are kind of like this elegant, almost like parade-like armor. And as they stand there, they all look at you, and they all look back as you kind of like, as Kyra kind of like guides you all in, into the throne room. As you all enter into the throne room, you move past the honor guard. He basically kind of, kind of like takes a knee, looks at all of you, kind of like nods. Argus takes a knee. Oh. Uh, Lawrence is going to follow Sargus Q. Nope. Take, take the knee. <laughs> I follow me. Well. As you all, as, as you all take a knee, there's a booming voice from the back of the room. <clears throat> Welcome, esteemed guests. As you hear a rumble, you see the figure of the Emperor emerging in its entirety from this kind of like shadow cold as one by one, its scales begin to shimmer, almost like a rainbow. You see him coming out in its massive form, towering directly in front of you, as he kind of like crosses his front legs and lowers to 
to a distance that is basically like a couple of meters away from where you are in the video. At this point, you see the entire room kind of like standing attention. You kind of like dark your eyes around, and everybody's kind of like, you know, like an in an attention position. You see, that is everybody. Oh my god, I can't take this. You all kind of like get up. Your services to the Imperium have been beyond that. He looks at Kairos. Kairos kind of like nods. And you see him going to like a corner of the room. But there are two guards that are standing in front of this incredibly decorated table. It's like golden. It's like this kind of like nightstand, but it's incredibly decorated. But there's like a rectangular box made of what looks to be very fine wood resting on top. You see, guys, very ceremoniously pick up this rectangular box and takes both of his arms. And then he moves towards the position where you are and not giving his back to the other turns to the side and he kind of presents the, the box forward and you see the other shift in this kind of vortex of this beautiful shimmering energy that it has all the fucking colors of the fucking rainbow as it this vortex coalesces into a humanoid form. As he kind of coalesces into a humanoid form, you see that this time around he looks more like an elf, as his kind of like pale skin, almost shimmering by the sunlight that is coming into his place. Cool. You see him kind of like approaching all of it. He opens the box and he picks up what looks to be a ring from him. You hear the, the voice from the speaker that previously kind of like ushered you into the room the day before, but this time hasn't said anything. And now it says, Ivan dos Santos, step forth. Uh, yeah, I, I'll step forth. Uh, I'll step forth. You, look, you see the upper taking the, the ring from the box. Extend your right hand, please. I, I do it. Puts the ring. On top of your middle finger, but it slides very carefully, and you feel that the ring almost tightens up a little bit around you. And you kind of like look at it. Make a perception check. Okay. Uh, I rolled a 20 plus 7. <laughs> I'm blind. Okay, I got a natural one, an 8. You basically look at it. The design is very intricate. It is. Almost like a like a gold and silver embroidery that describes the the kind of like the alliance of the ring, the, the ring itself, that they basically intertwine between each other, ending up in what looks to be a kind of like a top part that describes like a circle. And beyond that, you're not able to make up something because at the point you're like looking at the emperor trying to look at the ring with a bit nervous, kind of like not. Services invaluable to the Imperium. I hereby grant you the rank of king. For what? The entire group salute. Uh, I answered you. Then you hear Argus Ishkal, step forth. Argus steps forth. You step forth. He takes another ring, slides it on your middle finger. You feel it tightening a little bit. For services invaluable to the Imperium, I hereby grant you the rank of king. You see the upper kind of like, slightly kind of like bow. Argus bows too. And one by one, each and every one of you are named. You step forth, you presented with this ring. You feel it tightening a little bit around your finger. 
each and every one of you. As now start to form the line with like the ring on your finger, you see him both take a step back. There's no greater art for an outsider within the imperial to be granted king. Mm -hmm. Wherever you may be, whenever you may need it, and however it may be possible, the Imperium stands as your ally. Should any door be opening, should any sucker be tended, should any assistance be needed, and should it be within the Imperium's power, I hereby declare the second these gifts as kin of the Imperium, witness of today's refinement. He looks at Kairos, as if you see Kairos kind of like step forth next to the Emperor, he looks at all of you. I, Kairos of the Eclipse, am honored to become kin. As leader of Clan Eclipse, I humbly accept you into our ranks. May we be of service whenever you need it. And you see, um, Chief Thor also placed himself next to the Emperor. Look at all of you. I, Thorbald, Thorbald the Black Briar, serve as witness of the triumph of the Mexicans as king. If, should you ever need it, our doors will open for you. You need all but ask. And kind of like bows to you. See the emperor kind of like looking at both of you, at uh, both of them, kind of like nods at both of them. They both take their place back in line. And the emperor kind of like looks at you. Thank you. Friends, King, your services to the Imperium will never be forgotten. We will commit your existences to the memory. May you live in glory and find peace. At this point, the guard again stands at everyone stands in attention and they all kind of like salute as the emperor takes a slight bow towards you and you see the entire room saluting you as they're all looking at each and every one of you the emperor kind of like steps back swirls the, the, the swirl of energy kind of comes around him as it grows it grows it grows and you see him basically turn into, the, into his dragon form looks at all of you May this blessing accompany you until you draw your last breath. And you see him basically through his nose. And his spell is sort of like aura. And it bathes you, covering your entire body. You kind of like, you know, look at yourselves as this almost best Pains to you for like a second and then completely disappears. Now every citizen of the Imperium will recognize you as king. And he steps back into the um, into kind of like his his cove. You see kind of like Kyle's kind, of, kind of like at this point kind of like smiling a little bit. You see looking back at what the Emperor She's supposed to be because he just goes completely invisible as soon as he steps into the shadow of his coat. You see him taking a knee. The chief takes a knee. The guard kind of like stands in attention again. And you listen. And you see kind of kind of getting up and kind of like guides you outside. As you kind of like all make your way 
without turning your back to the emperor outside the guard kind of like leaves the room and the doors close that was what you like now we're kidding he kind of like smiles at all of you so we're like we're like citizens now we're going to take a break as I can see something, otherwise I will stop. However, at this point, there's two things I need to tell you. Number one, you level up. Oh, <laughs> and number two, should you qualify for it, you may, instead of leveling up your normal class, take a prestige class of your choice if you want to level prestige classes. Oh. I want to go grab some dinner. All right. Ooh. Okay. It's, 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 time for this. I'm gonna actually take a look at the prestige classes that I qualify. I'll be right back. Normal level. Here we go. Although a normal level wouldn't be that bad, but I still want to take a look at the at my options on prestige classes. I can teleport normally now. Fuck. Normal teleportation. We're pogging the fuck out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look over this another time. I can't do it on my laptop. It's too slow. Go versus oh the gosh. bonus hit point just because I have barely any hit points right now. Nightblade Earth, fuck! <laughs> okay. Now I can enchant normal weapons. Finally. <laughs> Dude, I've been waiting for it for ages. Can you, can you give me key? Hmm? I can, but it'll only be for like two minutes. <laughs> I know. Remember, you guys, there was one spell that I was looking for that will give you guys enchantments on things. Hold on. As for my feet, I'm going to get Dusk Strike so I can attack people's touch AC normally. <laughs> um, where is it? Uh, well, time to start researching like. All... <laughs> oh, boy. Is there anyone. Nope, can't do this one. I don't have that one. Umbral agent. Nope. There we go. All right, cool. Add a dusk strike. Nice. Spells remain to be selected. Oh yeah, spells. We got those words there. Ah, uh, fuck me. I know that I do not account for Eldritch Knight. <sighs> Prestige. A prestige class. Okay, now I have to decide between displacement. I guess displacement's pretty good. Wait, you can get displacement too? Yeah, it's a spell. Oh, I just fell off it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, displacement is broken, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm going for it. Shall I tell you why? Because that plus uh, deadly dodge would be insane. Every single time they miss me because of displacement, I get an attack against them. I'm not a rogue. 70 max HP, minus 14 from it. <laughs> no, I'm not a party leader, so nope. I don't even qualify for this. Nope, I don't have knowledge religion. Do I qualify for this one? How many ranks do I have on stealth? Oh yeah, skills. Uh, fudge, only three, and that's because we're dealing a lot with Damn, I don't even have anything on stealth. Okay, so nope, can't even grab that one. Knowledge, nobility, where's knowledge, nobility? Metal Herald, pretty sure in this one I can't. There we go, increase it to two. Perception, perception, yep, nope. perception. No, I'm not even hard. I can't to. level up my character right now. I got. Just, I'll do it later. <laughs> I'm, the left <laughs> so I'm not an alchemist, master spy. This one, pretty sure, is rogue. I don't even have iron will, so nope. I'm done with my leveling stuff. Cool. Nope. Wait, wait, wait. What was that one? Let me double check that one. History. Rage prophet. What the fuck is this one? Rage prophet. <laughs> Oh, it's just for oracles, but still, like, what the hell? <laughs> and... hmm. 
Um, nope, can't take this one. Oh, time to take a look at prestige classes. Give me like a... Oh boy. Starting from A to B, then C to D. Yeah. Then to these now, it's... Do you really want a prestige class? I, I want to look at my options. That's the main thing about this one. Because uh, hey, Lawrence, some prestige classes, that. some prestige classes are actually like, they will actually help. Dude, For me, just... prestige classes are detrimental. <laughs> Dude, I just realized Damien's gonna get a huge power strike, uh, like level increase. Cause I didn't even drink the potion yet. I'm gonna do it this session. <laughs> the awakening session. Okay, let me let me save this and export it, and then send it over to Ronan. At the same time, I doubt I qualify for. I think I may qualify for one, but the thing is, like, you, Judas, you know how many ranks I got per level, right? <laughs> You know the fact that I have two ranks per level? Mm -hmm. Barely anything. <laughs> yeah, barely anything. For the kids these days, man. You just get more skills, man. Get, get better okay, skills. Okay, no, that's just two ranks. Yeah. Okay, so that means this one, Arcane Savant, out of here. Agent of Grave. I'm not evil, so can't grab that. Neutral good. Okay, I'm neutral good. Uh, knowledge nature. Don't have that, nor religion. Out of here. Um, don't have perform. Don't have mounted combat. No religions. No alchemy. There we go. All right. Now I send this one over to Ronan. <laughs> and this one seems to be. Oh, this one's We're for a to do for this for like ages. So I was already prepared. Brother of the seal. Nope. Okay. Uh. I'm just gonna take a look and see if it's like anything like actually like catches my interest. Divine Scion, that's probably doesn't work on me because yup, I know it, religion. Uh, Guild Devil, Great Corsair, Harvest Tiller. Hey, I'm back. Dark Knight, right. Evangelist, False Priest, nope. Genie Binder, sort of sounds interesting. What do you got here? Uh, uh, what have I missed? We leveled, we leveled up. up. <laughs> oh. And each of us have gotten a ring that declares us citizens of uh, Adam Ethereum. We're kin. We're kin now. Kin Mortal Usher, Yutishar, Liberator, Lion Blade, Low Templar. Oh, Oh, right, that thing. <laughs> that thing I, I was thinking about when I leveled up. <laughs> that support thing. Support thing. You know which support thing. I know, I know, you told me about it. I should forget yeah. its name. Where the fuck? Why is there we go? I gotta eat the duck. Am I fuck? I gotta get a new mouse. <laughs> So like I have to like lightly pat my mouse in awkward directions to get it to turn on. Uh, I completely okay. So apart from the level up and the kinship, what happened? Um, that's about it. That's it. Oh. Of major importance. Yeah, uh, I mean, we got that whilst we were at some. In general. Of major importance. I mean, you were here for you know the talk with the king, right? When he did the ceremony and made us kin and you know leveled us up. That's about it. I knew yes, but that's when I had to limp. Okay, well that that's what happened. <laughs> that's what he did. Oh. What well, we're uh, we're allies with them now. We can call for their help. That too. It's well, basically, yeah, citizens very... man. I have a very good support spell now. <laughs> hey, I can enchant normal weapons and I have more enchantments. <laughs> more bursts. <laughs> wait, let me wait, let me take, I think I think this one's one of the ones that I actually qualify for Technomancer. Do I qualify for it? You know what this means? <laughs> what? what does this mean? No more will saves <laughs> against weapons. If I'm using an actual weapon and enchanting it. 
Oh, wait, are you, guys, are you just gonna use like the real Elven Curve Blade now? Or yeah, what? you want and the real scythe, yeah. And plus the scythe that I have is a plus one, so <laughs> even better. Wait, so the Elven Curve Blade I bought you is actually useful? Yep. Wow. I it's just that it wouldn't have been useful for a long time, but now, because yeah. now we're good. I didn't. It just damn. took a few months. Hola! Aiden owes me. Aiden owes me. How we doing? <laughs> Who's, uh. <laughs> Never mind. Who's what? Who's. Who? He's taking a prestige class. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fudge, no, I don't have any ranks for it. I should have gone for Sage instead of being just a regular sorcerer, goddammit. Rip. Uh, I'm just gonna you level up. You choose to be cringe. Oh, uh, hey, I have a C. I have no yeah, I'm just gonna level up. If, if, I went, if I went Sage, though, I would have been so much more effective in a lot of scenarios, but eh, this is fine. <laughs> uh, I think you're pretty effective enough. <laughs> Hey man, an intelligence based sorcerer, okay, got extra knowledge, extra skill points, that would have been great. Oh, I'm cool. Man, I'm sad, I as, found the speed. As currently, I just get two per level, Dino. Just two oh. skill points per level. Rip. Dude, I have negative intelligence and I still get more than five. Jesus. Goodness. A price to pay for salvation, my friend. <laughs> You can Get convert away. to Nightblade, right? Yeah, get a Nightblade level, oh my god. Hell no. Oh, hell yeah, max HP! That's a 6! <laughs> okay. I need all the health I can get. My health currently stands at 57. Mm, really? really? Wait, at level 9, 57? Yeah. I think I, think, I, think... I may I have double. If I get lucky on it, I could probably breach 100. Uh, I Actually, mean... no. I can't I reach reach 100 when I rage. Never mind. I can't reach 100. <laughs> I'm almost certain. Currently, I'm at 70, and then you take away the 14 for the permanent. Rip. So 56. Ooh, that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at 72 right now. I'm thinking about adding more to my Arcana Engineering, honestly, in yeah. terms of knowledges. Because it's either that, or it might be having one on stealth, although the one on stealth won't really do much because I'm not proficient with it. Yeah. Currently, just looking for anything. A fucking good feats. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, we get a feat. Wait, Ooh. do we get a feat? Yeah, we get a feat. Feet. Show feet. Show feet. <laughs> oh wait. <gasps> wait. <laughs> do I want Ronan to hate me? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yes. Quick and spell. I'm thinking about it. Quick and spell. <laughs> uh -huh. Yo, I'm thinking do it. of two different feats. I got Cyanic Talon and Cyanic Endowment here. Which one what... gives me more power points and the other gives me more a higher DC save against my with my powers. Uh, do, you, do you need higher DC? I don't know. I don't know my higher you, you have a lot of your stuff costs power points, right? Yeah. Everything costs power points. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let me see. What's my DC? Oh wait, That's I have 120 feet dark vision now. Hog. <laughs> Hog. I can outcompete creatures with dark vision in their own land. <laughs> Too wait, easy. What? Wait, quick and spell is more OP than I freaking realize. I'm reading it and it's just like it literally just gives me an entire freaking action. Yep. My That's current, a sweet action. My current highest DC is 16. Huh. Yeah, casting a quick and spell does not provoke an attack of opportunity. Ooh. Uh, but was it four levels above the current level that I have, right? I don't know. Oh, shared power actually might be cool. Manifest personal powers of a 30 feet ray or with the network along the or with the network descriptor. I'm pretty sure that's the case, but I think I have something that reduces the casting. Hey, oh, hold up, Judas. Mm -hmm. Fucking, I can cast shit that has personal range with, with as a thirty foot ray or with the network descriptor. With the network descriptor. So you know, coordinate is one. That's a network. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. But it do need to be personal. 
96. How the hell would a bend body work with like that? <sighs> If I can grab a wait, you said prestige rank, right? Mm. Or a prestige class if you can. Yeah, prestige classes, yeah. I need to look into that later. Not on my laptop, but later tonight. <laughs> well, if you just go to PC Gen and type in prestige in the classes, it'll show you what's available to you. What you qualify for, basically. Well, nothing apparently. Wait, what is this? This no arcana? The fudge? <laughs> You are kind of, oh yeah, you choose like a school or something and you get higher DCs, I think, or spellcaster level. This one's sorcerer level, though. You know, it is always good to have higher DCs for my power. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm, yeah. I'm double checking though what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's time to get back to freaking, where's my freaking folder for this PC again? Okay. Uh, Pathfinder, here you go. Uh, well, fire. No, 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 no. Uh, let me take a look for her freaking sorcerer. And where's the arcane bloodline? The indisputably the most freaking broken bloodline there is, unless you count Sage, which is uh, an archetype of that bloodline. Uh, arcane, arcane, arcane. Here it is. Shit. I can't, I can't, I can't do any prestige ranks. Fuck. Rip. Yeah, boy, Uthar got 21 sneak. Let's go. It's just... I actually didn't know uh, yeah. if Ronia allowed for sneak. Okay, so it's just, it just, New York kind of pretty much just uh, makes it so I can add an extra spell. Nice. Okay. But here's the thing though, I can add an extra fourth level spell. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. instead, instead of the usual add one level. Add a spell one level lower from the highest one that you can cast, which I get every single level. So this is an additional one to that. Nice. But this is slightly better, so I can get better stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. hold on, wait a minute. Oh, and I get dimensional, dimension door. Hey, let's go. Dimension door bug. And let me double check when do I get a, a bloodline feet next bloodline feet and that's 13 okay. Oh, that sticks. To, oh, god damn it. I still have my hero points I never used. Same here. Wait, um, what do I need? Uh, how do I check for for siege? I don't know what to take because my fifth level options are majority shit because they <laughs> all have to do with power resistance hmm. okay people finally phantom chariot it's official we got it nice got our own vehicle to park wait what are we naming it you decided still thinking hmm. about it I mean, hold on. Actually, hmm. oh man, I I got. I wish Ronan comes back. I have to go dinner soon, probably. Well, session's Maybe. over. I could it's have. Over? Coordinate yeah, it's not over. Them. We're, we're through. Have... We're going through a break right now. It's just a break. I, I, we I could have coordinate as one permit. Yeah, it's, it's just a break. Of... It's just a break. <laughs> session's not over yet. Do this. Yeah. Remember when I talked about coordinate one as one being permanent? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I can do that now. Huh. Damn. Yeah. Permanency spell or permanency power I need. Uh, okay. Wait, so can you uh can I have both active as well? Wait, wait. So can you enchant a weapon and then put permanency on it? Oh well, you have to put permanency on it. Yeah, you have to get a permanency it. spell. Someone have it? No none of us have it. He has permanency power, so he can make his powers, his psionic powers permanent. No man. <laughs> yeah. So, I can actually have coordinate as one uh, permanently on, and it is both on the offense and defensive stance. Oh, nice. Me so, we have content idea. plus one to damage and hit damage, hit, and AC. Nice. Mm -hmm. 
Tog. Dark enchantment here. It's, it's, it's a spell that's like what a, I wanted, which is in two more levels. <laughs> Brutalize wings. Hmm. The fuck is this? Wait, th that wasn't me. That was a option. I have more options. That just involves meta concerns. Not that can only answer into this matter. She could create an army of the same type. Typically a melee weapon, but can be used on ranged weapons if they possess a versatile armament on it. Enchanting a real weapon in this manner takes a single daily silver shadow armament. The night blade must be at least ninth level before selecting this art. Damn. Oh, at I least... can just turn into a tank from left or down. <sighs> I can throw fucking rocks. <laughs> Psychic status, psychic static inhibits power manifestation. Don't need that because that involves powers. Makes some powers permanent. We also have prowess as one. You and another share the use of the highest base attack base attack bonus between you. Okay. From what I'm thinking, I think I'm gonna go for peace. I think I'm just gonna go quick and spell, even though I cannot fully use it as a full power right now. But it's still pretty all right. Hold on, be right back. Oh, Ronan. Okay. I'm back. Is everyone? Is everyone back? Uh, we just left as you came back. Also, I have the inner stream power boy. I might have to go soon. It's the end of the Greek tree lap, so I was attending for a shorter session this time. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. To give, to give you guys some time to mull, I'm gonna throw you into a fight in the attempt. I just told you, you level up, get this, you get that. You have more time to all over things. Also, if you choose a prestige class, please do tell me which one. Yeah, sadly, I don't qualify for any class. I don't have enough to my friend. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't know. I didn't know prestige classes were gonna be a thing, so I didn't put points into it beforehand. I was thinking about it since day one, but. Don't have I, ranks. I think the only one I qualify for is Eldritch Knight. <laughs> oh, I mean, why did Dragon Disciple? El Eldritch Knight is nice and everything, but yeah, I don't know how good it is for Magus. Yeah, the, the, that's the thing. Like for a Magus per se, meh. For a Swashbuckler though, if you freaking multiclass a Swashbuckler with a Wizard, is freaking insane. It can be quite insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not as not as powerful as some other classes per se, but it's still an interesting thing yeah. to, to do. <laughs> Whenever an Eldritch Knight successfully confirms a critical hit, he can cast a spell as a swift action. This is yeah. at level ten, though. It's like yeah, so that, that's the only out. caveat. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much, like I tried to make the like I was testing on builds, and literally you would have to roll pretty well and have five levels on wizards and five levels on swashbuckler yeah and then 10 levels on elder Knight. yeah and that would be the only way that i was able to figure out that working as freaking well as it could let me look up upheaval yeah, yeah. yeah only other thing i think could work maybe nice. slayer all the things slayer i don't think gets martial weapon proficiency from the get-go they should. I don't remember. <laughs> Either way. I don't remember either. Um, let me double check what can spell. Okay. I gotta go check. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, I have a plus five weapon now. Let's go. Oh, wait, no, I have even better. I can finally, I can finally apply enchantments, or I can always could, but now I don't, I don't lose anything by applying enchantments to Chris's. I can deal nine, I can deal 96 points of bludgeoning damage. There you go, nice. Okay. Yes, I can, but I don't know if I want to. From what I'm reading, um, okay, so Quicken Spell for some reason has two different, um, descriptions. One in PC Gen and one in D20 PSRD. Well, you take the D20 PFSRD one. Yeah, okay, so it's just, I would have to cast it on a spell. Like, I would have to use it on a spell. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Welcome back. Which one, seems, Chris, so Judas, which one seems more important? Throwing rocks that deal 96 bludgeoning damage or being able to have permanent plus one to damage hit dice and, I mean, attack rolls and uh, AC? Stuff is for you to decide after the fact. Mm. Uh, another thing that I forgot to tell you is you also need to add two hero points. Ooh. Oh, two? Two? Okay. Oh, shit! Uh, hero points. Two more extra hit points. Hero points. Hero. Oh, hero? Two extra? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, and damn. Sure. So, at this point, go close. It's kind of like standing there. Kind of looks Okay. That was the theory. Kind of like smiles at you. Oh, okay. The debrief. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> Wait, are we still inside the throne room or are we out, uh, outside, outside of it? Now? We're outside the throne room. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, do we see oh. Ferdinand? At this point, you don't see Ferdinand. Oh. Uh. We should probably ask around. Well, we gotta do probably the debrief. Not. And then we can ask mm -hmm. around. Oh yeah, Kairos, when is that? It's right now. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. Holy <laughs> shit. Any questions? Uh, yeah, Any so questions? kin means like we're citizens now of the... Black the Emperor's. Kin is the highest honor granted to a foreigner. Oh. Yeah. Wait, you said kin, right? I, I don't know why I wrote king. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, I could not learn a new spell. Okay, then never mind. So then we... So... Uh, how, how exactly does that rank us amongst everybody else? Hmm? You are no longer the guests of the Era Imperium. What friends? Yeah, okay. All right. Wait. Oh. So am I or, legally able to purchase a house here? If you want to, yes. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I could actually set up a. Eventually, I would like to actually set up a business here. Auto mail business. That too, if you want. Hmm. It's either. In a way, you are now allies of the Anna Imperium. That ring signifies as such. And you're also Clan Kings. Clan, uh, oh, oh, okay. So we're part of your clan now? You're not part of our honorary members. Oh, okay. It does not entail any particular obligations. It's, right. Uh, it's a gesture of thanks. And should you need help and we are in a position where we are able to provide it, we'll not hesitate to do so. Okay. How do we. Well, if we're. Say we're in the Aston or not. Yeah, say we're in the Republic. If we called for help there, would you be able to help us? I'm only precise moment, yes, we would help. Would you say, Ronan? If we can, at that precise moment. Yes. Wow. How would we call for? Is it through the rings we call for help? For help? No, the rings are up to decorate. I don't know. How do you call for help? We would probably, have to, send a, we would probably have to send a message, I guess. Yeah, yeah, would we send the message to you? I imagine we wouldn't bother the emperor with that, unless it was really important. But 
You can't send a message to the emperor. It's not like... Anyway, you can message him. Okay, alright. You don't want to look at that like that. Yes. That was, uh... That was quite the debrief. Yeah. But now for a much more... personal debrief. I will have you at the estate. Oh, all right. And he kind of stops for a second, tilts the lords. You wanted to see Turner, correct? Oh. Yes. Lawrence. Lawrence what is him? You wanted Lawrence. to see Ferdinand? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. okay. Got, like, got you all on paths to get there. The honor guard remains still, you go back to the carriage, back down into the, um, into the estate. As you return to the estate, you gotta go back, you get off the carriage. This time, the carriage kind of like guides you to the main house. There is like a, like a, you know, like a table set in. So, okay. Lunch to commemorate our new friends, new <laughs> friendships. Hell yeah. Kind of like you all sit around the table. Um, the food that they serve is, again, an assortment of meats and fruits and vegetables, and such and such and such. Once again, delicious. Kind of like all have your lunch. And right after you know, guys that you fill and Amongst the pleasantries, she kind of like, <clears throat> So, as friends, and as honorary members of Clan Eclipse, I cannot let you walk away with nothing. And he kind of like pulls out what looks to be a small bag, puts it on top of the table. My clan mates, my kin, never want for nothing. Don't take this as a payment of anything, but as a gesture of thanks. And, well, as a preventative measure, should you fall into um, ill tidings, yet, if that were to happen, you should, of course, turn first and outmost to us. Because, well, friends here now, and that word actually carries weight. <laughs> he kind of like slides the, the, the back towards Ivan. You'll find in that bag 50,000 gold pieces. Holy shit! Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. And you kind of like take it, or you gotta like carry it, it's weightless. And it's like, the kind of boy said, Yes, it is a bag of holding. Oh, another bag of holding? <laughs> he gets it a bag of holding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Jesus Christ. Oh. So, so Lawrence wanted to see Vernon? Yes. Wait, say again? Yeah, to see Vernon? Yes. Do you want it to see Ferdinand? Yes, that is correct. Follow me. Okay. And you gotta look strong. If you want to come, you're free to come too. Mm. And I think Aiden wanted to follow as well. Wait, what was uh, that? Sorry. Uh, what's this? Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Ferdinand? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with him. I, I've got some stuff to take care of. So, I, it's the potions. I need to get, I need to do this. <laughs> you need to do the potions? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't drink it this whole time. Well, that would have been a bit rash to drink it while you were in the other dark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, if you require any particular chambers, you want to drink the potions we need, so that I can provide what we haven't had anyone use that in a while. So, it might be a bit um, beneath samples, but it could serve. Well enough, however, let me take care of Lawrence's request first. Can I just come on? So whoever wants to follow Lawrence can follow Lawrence. Yep. 
I mean, I'll follow. You'll be all right, Lawrence, or uh, uh, wants to come with you? I'm, I'm going with him. Uh, up to you, uh, Lawrence. You want me? We would be appreciate it. No? All right. Yeah, we'll go with you, buddy. You know what? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with you. I'll just drink this after. It's fine. I'll go with you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fine. You kind of like go. I don't want to do this alone. <laughs> you kind of like go with Kyle. She guides you back to the library, and as you walk inside the library, you see that sitting in like one of the library's tables. Mulling over a bottle of, mulling over a glass of what looks to be wine. Uh, but you're not quite sure. After all, that is a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's in Fortnite. As he looks at all of her. Ah, friends. It's a pleasure to see you again. He finishes his cup of red liquid. Puts it on the... Uh, on the table that gets up. So, you wanted my particular help in mm -hmm. well, identifying the nature of your curse. What specifically are you looking for? Well, well, three things, in fact. Number one, what kind of curse is it? What would it do to me? Second thing, who did it? Probably like where it is or things of that information. And the third thing, it's about a specific quill I found. Down there in the Underdark. Oh, a specific quill. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And he kind of like... He wants you to kind of like take a seat in front of him. Please do take a seat. Okay. Um, so Kyle's... Um, a small bowl if you please, Kyle's. And you see Kyle's... Yes, once! You see Kyle's go outside, not a minute later. Kyle's back with like a tiny little... It looks to be like a silver bowl. That's it. And you see um, Ferdinand pull, up, pull, pull out of his throat what looks to be a letter opener. Can I have your hand, please? Here you go. I give him my hand. He takes his, he makes a, the smallest of incisions in the hand. You take one point of damage as oh, okay. he makes the smallest of incisions and very skillfully with the letter opener connects the blood that walks out of your injury. And basically deposits on the bolt. With that same gesture, he kind of like passes his hand above yours and you're healed of that one point of damage. No. As your wound is now gone. And it's like, okay. You see him as he kind of like raises his sleeves up. One thing you notice about Ferdinand is the fact that he has a lot of tattoos on his flesh. They describe different kind of shapes and patterns. Some of you um, saw uh, a couple of them when he did the ritual with Ethan. Kind of like puts one of his hands on top of the bowl, and you see that one of the tattoos that he has in the palm of his hand literally turns red. And he um, really kind of like lifts off like a sign from his palm. And it just glows deep, deep, deep red. As you see, Ferdinand's eye go blank. <laughs> Stays there for a second. You see, eventually, the sign <laughs> dissipate as his eyes go back to normal. Hmm. Interesting. So I can also tell you two things about this okay. case. Number one, it's a blood curse. It's a what? A blood curse. Blood that curse? Means that, that means that a copious amount of somebody else's blood was sacrificed in order to place it on you. Okay. Second thing is, it's an old curse. Ancient, even. Hmm. You see him kind of like maul over the bowl that has like droplets of your blood in it. You see him kind of like looking at it. You see his eyes glow for like a second. And they go back down. Yes. I'm not exactly able to ascertain what, who put that curse in. Mm. But what I can tell you is that the only way of lifting it probably be with the same individual. I did it initially. With a ritual. 
a ritual, it's a way of doing it. The thing about curses is that it's a lot easier to place them than it is to give them. Hmm. This one is old. Well, the thing that I can ascertain about this curse is the fact that. What the fuck? Where did the buck go? God damn it. The... Oh, there is. Someone has my liberty over accidentally inside to we can't we can't hear you very well. Oh, yeah, we can't hear you very well, Ronan. It sounds like you're far away. Yeah, you can't do anything about that, but I guess I can get not to waste my body. It was myself and I was fucked up. Uh Increasing his volume, turning music volume down. Let's see. 11. <laughs> I, I don't know. I increased vo Ronan's volume. It's still hard to hear. Something, something your end. That's all I heard. He said that he'll see if he can do anything from his end to fix it. Yep. You hear me better now? Yeah, uh, we hear you good now. Yep. How about now? Yeah. Perfect. Nope. Okay. Oh, I don't know what it was because I didn't touch anything. Anyway. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, uh, he says this is a curse. It probably affects you, man. I'm not even able to tell the precise your voice started going again. Yep, it started to freaking. It might be a Wi Fi thing, I, I can't tell. I'm not actually Wi Fi, I'm not actually a hard connection. Uh. I think hmm. it might be Discord's echo cancellation. It, maybe either that or it has to oh, do with the voice cancelling. I don't use it. I have it off. Okay. You're good again. <laughs> I don't know what's up. It is the way, off. It's like... the way you're saying. It's the way, like, the tone of your voice. That's why the mic isn't picking up. Because when you're speaking normally, it's, uh, it'll pick up better. Alan, I'm sorry. So, your curse is ancient. Somebody went to extreme lengths as to not disclose its true nature. However, there's one more thing we can do. He looks at Kairos. Uh, Kairos, please fetch me a map. It's like, looks at, at Ferdinand. Kairos looks at Ferdinand. A map? And you see Ferdinand nodding. Or Ferelia. I will try to pinpoint the place where this curse originated. Or at least the place where its originator is dwelling at the moment. Either or, you never know. You see, Thanos go outside again, bring back a large, kind of like a map of Aurelia, put it on top of the table. You see, uh, Ferdinand removes the ball, puts it to a side, Picks up the knife again that has still traces of blood and essentially kind of like takes it, the little bit of those blood traces his eyes go blank again and from his right hand you do see that another one of these kind of like weird symbols emerge as his eyes go blank you see the remnants of the blood that was resting in the tip of his fingers now turn to dust as they mingle with the um with the, the symbol that is now hovering above his hand, shining in a deep, deep red. As this kind of like dust kind of like 
coalesces and forms into a much more um, powder of some sort. You see the powder kind of like swim or kind of swivel around the map once, twice, and then it begins to coalesce. It begins to coalesce. It begins to coalesce until it just finally lands on a spot of the map. Okay. The symbol kind of like fades away. Is the Ferdinand's eyes go back to normal as his hands kind of like step out of the map. Ah. Interesting. Have you ever been to Gladria, perchance? To Gladria? Mm -hmm. I could have had. I just... Before I, before I was with the Mexicans, I was just traveling on the road. Didn't really pay attention to the map. That was mostly my dad's, my father's um, job, really. And also driving the cart. So the, at, at the map, it's like, hmm, this place. Thank you all. Do, 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 do. As he kind of like points at a place in the map. Let's see where in the map. Don. Don Heights. Hold up. That's where the letter. Oh. I'll tell you for sure if the person who placed the curse is there at this present point in time or if the curse itself was originated in that particular place. Interesting. It can be either or. That's where my father's note told me he was heading to. Interesting. Did you get cursed by your papa? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time in this party. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ferdinand. As for the quill, I'm gonna grab him up. <laughs> I'm on. As as soon as you grab a moon, master, I yearn to serve you. <laughs> I love it. I am moon. Unto mine ink, thy judgment. I'm just gonna let you be examine a moon. So give me a second, and I present the quill to to further. <laughs> Pull out the quill and you put it on. Ferdinand's eyes kind of like open up and say, Interesting. You see him, he looks at you, he's like, Mary? Go ahead. He casts, you see him wave his hands, a couple of signets go by, like a couple of like magical kind of like signets drawing the air as his hand kind of like waves. And they immediately kind of like disappear. His eyes glow for a second. Interesting. I've only read of these in books and old manuscripts dug from the Underdark. Are you perchance familiar with a pen of judgment? A pen of judgment? That's what it used to be called back in the old days. You see, in matriarch society, there were certain individuals that were empowered by the matriarchs to administer judges, justice, or judgments. There was a way of keeping order and law, not unlike tribunals that we, that many of the other nations have, but these judges were, let's just say, an all-in-one. We're all judge, jury, and executioners. And they use these pens to administer their judgments. This is indeed an ancient relic. Yup, and I've accidentally gotten a tone to it. 
Accidentally, you say. No, there's no such thing as an accident. Huh? The, the way the matriarchy, the way the matriarchy built these devices, is very unique. Hmm. Because the only thing that you would have as a requirement in order to be able to use them was a blood connection to its original member. You say it attuned to you instantly. Yep. And this, oh, I gotta go, Ronan. Then there is no mistake. This particular pen has identified you because either it malfunctioned or you have some distant kinship Wait, towards bro. a member of the matriarchy. Ah. That could also, maybe also be how we were able to get into that, um, into that control center without problem. Mm. I haven't fully read the report yet on your happenings down there, but more certainly, I can tell you that these particular types of artifacts are bound by blood. So if it saw you as its master, it must have meant something. And again, Thousands of years of internment might have made it malfunction, but the other possibility is also to be considered. And that is the fact that, well, you might have seen you as a long distant relative of a member of the matriarchy, uh. particularly a judge. Interesting. That's all I can say about it. I'm sure you're well aware of its more intricate functions yeah but it, it also talks to me that's the art thing it talks to me yes which is in line with the characteristics of many of the matriarchy's artifacts you see they were made using souls what gives them such an impressive power was the fact that these artifacts were made using souls of the people that matriarchs enslaved in a way. They were particularly fond of using elvish souls for this. Huh. That's what gives these artifacts their unique distinction. And they would go to extreme lengths, from clothing to furniture to something as meaningless as a quill. That explains the amount of mimics in there. Ah, yes, I read about that mimicry furniture. I regret to inform you those are not mimics, not in the common sense. Mm -hmm. A mimic in reality is a monster that can take the guise of an ordinary object. By essentially disguising its presence, it's able to ambush any um, unfortunate soul that is not careful enough. However, those furnishings, those furnishings you saw down there, and uh, if my knowledge does not elude me, those furnishings were actually regular furniture that were then magicked employing the soul of an individual. Damn. Yeah, the matriarchy had its quirks. They were able to artificially make a soul? No, not to my knowledge at least. But they were able to manipulate souls to a degree that simply is beyond what any civilization has been capable of understanding to this day. After all, their power rivaled even that of the gods themselves. And if there is one thing that will get Phorasma involved in anything is soul manipulation. For that is her domain. Huh. And what would you suggest we do with this artifact? 
Hmm. It is bound to you. It's not inherently harmful. Beyond that, I can say that whatever you wish to do with it, it's your choice. Okay. After all, Pathfinder rules do dictate finders keepers, unless national interest comes first. Darn, we could have kept the dimensional fortress, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, that is national. That is... I don't think you would have been able to keep it. And judging by the report them itself, you were a breath away from causing a pretty serious catastrophe by manipulating it without knowing. <clears throat> well, it was not like it was completely without knowing. It was. So, sir, so you brought it close to what is essentially obliteration, knowing you were doing so? Not that we knew it was going to come close to obliteration, but... Because let me tell you, one of those, one more of those dimensional jumps, and you would have been trapped in a different plane of existence with yeah. a crumbling fortress around you. We knew that much. We, the first dimensional jump was an accident. We didn't realize it was going to jump to another plane to send a message, but... Uh, anyways. That's how messaging works. You need to be in the same plane of existence. Well, if, when we, we were telling it to send a message to the Zill, we thought it was going to send a message to a Zill that was still on the material plane, not whatever plane they come from. Zill don't inhabit the material plane. <laughs> well, they inhabited it when they were trying to kill us. Yes, they ambush people in the material plane, but they don't uh, inhabit it. That is their call card. Yeah. They would basically live, inhabit in the ethereal plane, and once they would find a prey in the material, they would jump out into the material plane, hunt their prey, and then go back into the ethereal. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, that's not how I would describe them, but it is an adjective to use. Yeah. Fascinating. Their innate capability to shift planes at will, even though it is restricted to the ethereal, is indeed fascinating. Kill one, dissect it, see what it can do? Maybe it has like an organ or something. We have done that to plenty. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Have you tried talking to Zil before? Yes. <laughs> they don't seem as open to communication as the spiders. Well, the spiders didn't seem open to communication before, but then again, I am not a vaunted hero of the Imperium capable of achieving such feats in such a short notice. <laughs> Sense motive, is that sarcasm? <laughs> well, um, there it is, sense motive, that's a plus three. Ten. You don't send sarcasm in his speech. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> ah, you on the rest. Out of curiosity, so we kind of had the option to take the dimensional fortress wherever we wanted. Uh, not just through other dimensions, but wherever we wanted on the material plane. It was a lot more open that way. I... The best option seemed to take it back or as close as possible to Indomitus. Uh, Wise choice. And we thank you for it. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did consider going to other places briefly. Aston Republic. Mostly just Aston Republic. Natural. That's where your employer lives. Yeah. I. How much, would, how much of an issue would it have been if we did that? <laughs> Depending where let's exactly just, on the other Let's Republic. just say speculating on it is pointless. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh yeah, Ferdinand, I was meaning to ask you, do you happen to have a pocket dimension of your own? Or anything akin to that? Uh, wait, your voice is cutting off for me, Ronan. Can do certain things, but pocket dimensions that is beyond my realm of expertise. Huh. 
Why do you ask? Good. Um, well, one of the things that Nosferatu could do, or at least claims that he could do, is create one of those and inhabit it himself. And I did something similar to that, although on accident, not out of my own will. And I thought maybe you could do it, because his reasoning was that I am his kin, and therefore I can do it. Not exactly. The exact nature of, well, our unique nature, so to speak, eludes me. I am relatively young compared to Nosferatu. Even though I was created as, in a way, his copy, mm. our powers differ greatly. Okay. Let's see. However, I am not his progeny. I see. So even though you're a clone, you don't necessarily have the exact same abilities as him. Familiar with the term clone, but... Oh. <laughs> I mean, we are genetically identical to him, right? I'm not familiar with the term genetically. Oh, shit. <laughs> we are biologically identical to him. Hmm. Not quite. You see, I was born as a copy, but... Well, if I were to be biologically identical, then I would have the same capabilities he has, or that you share. But that is not the case. Mm. So I wouldn't know what to tell you there. Okay. Let's see then. In that case, you told me that you've met Dampiers before, but they haven't lived long, right? They don't tend to live long, no. How long do they usually tend to live? for as long as somebody else takes to kill them. Oh. I see. Thought Damn. maybe it's an issue of lifespan, not somebody killing them. Damn, that's In that case, is... <laughs> have you seen a Dampier ever become a vampire? Oh, not to my knowledge, at least. Okay. I see. Well, I think that covers most of the questions that I had for you. <laughs> Oh, glad I could be of help. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. <sighs> oh, thank you for your services to the Imperium. Carla gets up. Well, if that'll be all, I'll be taking my leave. I'm gonna put Amon back to the bag. Wait, wait, before, what does he say to you? Um, <laughs> very. Like, stop. Very <laughs> creepy things. That's what he tells me. Um, creepy things, really? Very creepy. Creepy how? G give me a give me a quote. <sighs> I mean, knowing you, a lot of things could be creepy things. So. <laughs> uh, how we get our next target? You know, things of that nature. Kill people. Oh, He's telling you to kill uh, people. Right, like telling you to kill people, or. Jesus or like, Christ. right, how they die, things of that nature. Okay. Damn. <laughs> Is he forcing you? Not really, he's just talking. Okay. Uh, well, just have some goodwill and just don't follow what he's saying. Easy. <laughs> yeah, still. Just putting, just putting him back into the bag. <laughs> Where does he touch your mind, must? <laughs> Ink is my vehicle for thy judgment. Praised be thy absolute will. Mm. As you put him like, <laughs> as I as put him back, I'm just gonna mm. like repeat what he said. He told me this. Ah, oh, he's asking for you to like <laughs> cast judgment on people. That's pretty mm. creepy. Damn. <laughs> I don't know, man. Sounds kind of sounds kind of cool. <laughs> Can you pass uh, like pass judgment on like a bug? Or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, try that. Should be like a fly somewhere nearby. Wait, does it? Do you need ink to write with it? No, I use the the blood of um, if you know who, of the victim one. Victim or of yourself? A victim. The the blood of my victim. Really? Could, could you ask the feather? <laughs> That'd be really hard to 
I don't know if you could draw yeah, that much blood. Cast the above. feather to see if like <laughs> see how, how it its actual response would be. Uh, I'm assuming I, this is an assumption of yours, right? No, I already did ask him back in oh. back when we were down there how he would work. Uh, meta gaming wise, he didn't tell you that it uses the blood of the enemy. He just says, "No, he, <laughs> he did. He did. I, I don't recall that." It implied. I, <laughs> nope. Yeah, because Amon go back. Amon is back to the. He got to argue, and he turns back and says, like, "That type of pen or coil is mostly ceremonial." So it's not meant for killing people. Mostly. Oh, it is meant to kill people, but it's meant to kill people in a ceremonial way. Ah, I see. So some kind of like weird ritual type thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, not a part of a specific ritual. How would an incredibly civilized society like the Matriarch it was, you think, will impart judgment on those it deemed unworthy? Uh, okay. By brutally cutting their heads off, burning them, or simply hanging them, or by writing that which would be a very painful final minute? Okay, so it's an execution method. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. That is why it's called a pen of judgment. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'll be off. And you see Ferdinand turn into mist and immediately dissipate from the entire room. Oh, he does it too. Okay. I mean, well, the first time we saw him, he had like half of his body mist. Well, here's a question. What if we what if we get the mosquito and have it drink the blood of something and then use that blood? Would that work? I don't know if that'd be enough blood though. Then they're kind of small. Never mind. I mean, we'll uh, no, so wouldn't a mosquito's blood be somebody else's blood? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm thinking like uh, if you were to get the mosquito cool. to drink the blood of somebody else and then use the blood. I don't know. I don't know if that would even work because then you'd have to like squash the mosquito and then its blood gets mixed with that blood and then who knows what the fuck happens then? And if it's even enough blood, I. I mean, we I never know. thought of how much blood is even needed to make this thing function. Maybe even like a tiny drop would be enough. Maybe, but you have to be able to write the description out, so it has to be enough for that, right? Yeah. Write in very small letters. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. Maybe there's a maybe there's like an alphabet or something where each letter means like a certain phrase. I don't oh, know. Yeah, it could be. I have no yeah. languages. I only know this one and a couple others, but uh, I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Either way, now we got a map for Twolds. Um, a second, Dan's Dan's height. It's the one he Dan, pointed at. Dan height. Yeah. In Gladria. Oh, that's how the fuck are we gonna get into Gladria? Gladria. Yeah. I mean, I guess I don't. I forgot the last time we were in Aston Republic if the borders were closed or not. I don't remember. The last time I remember uh, they were closed. closed. I'm pretty sure. They're closed. Yeah. But yeah. because yeah. of what we did back in... Uh, back in Ravensburg. Ba no, oh, back in Ravensburg. Uh, they were investigating to see things in Gladia, if I'm not mistaken. We, ha true. we have and to talk to Lady Claudia about it. Well, yeah. you might not have to talk to her about it. There are two ways that we could do this. Either we sneak in on our own. Or we could talk to Lady Claudia and see if they have a common motive to us. Well, you know, we could just enter through the Edda Imperium, since they seem to be neutral with everybody. Yeah, but it would be weird if we came from the Edda Imperium. We don't really... Why would it be weird? We're kin here. It wouldn't be that weird. Yeah, well, people don't usually, from the Edda Imperium, don't usually go outside the Edda Imperium. Well, we're special so... guests, and the Edda Imperium would speak on our behalf for that. I'd imagine. I, I, don't, I don't think that would work. Why don't you think? I think it would work better than trying to sneak in or trying to come in from the Aston Republic, who are currently in conflict with Gladria. Where I put it. Uh, have you seen anybody from the Edda Imperium outside? It doesn't matter if we've seen anybody from the Edda Imperium outside. Yeah, well, it would... It's talking to officials to get us into Gladria. All right. It would just be the Edda Imperium speaking on our behalf. We're kin here now, technically speaking. That you know, yeah. grants us a little bit more of a connection to the Edda Imperium. <laughs> and if we were to go through the Edom Imperium instead, because I mean, there's, I mean, they have people from Gladria coming here. Why can't people mm -hmm. from the Edom Imperium go to Gladria? It's probably happened. People from Gladria don't come here. Yeah, they do. I mean, only for official stuff. 
Yeah, big well, diplomatic they have come, and people from the Edo Imperium have probably gone to Gladio. It's like it's like how yeah, like that. I was listening to both of you, kind of like looking back and forth. Um, sorry to interrupt, but I'd suggest before you head off into the distance of Gladria, talk to your boss first. Ivan? <laughs> no, no, not me. Not uh, Gladia. Uh, yeah. Gladia. Oh, okay. More like it. <laughs> Um, once you do, I'm sure things will become clearer. I have my orders and I cannot disclose much about it, so I will leave that off to her, but All right. something, there are events, things, occurrences that have been brewing in the background of your little expedition. After all, you came here as part of a global assessment of the threat of the hands of the matriarch. Right, right. All right. Well, okay. I guess that's what... That is where we're going to end today's session. Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we should have taken the Dimensional Fortress. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that would not have worked out well. No. It was already on the brink yeah, of yeah, yeah. being destroyed. Oh, it would have been very entertaining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, Super and entertaining. I would be and I would be driven fucking nuts because you, I literally gave you something I immediately regretted the second you started just using it. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, it like, yeah, maps, like, well, we could take it back to the Astro Republic right before the session. We we're like, fuck, we could have taken it directly to Gladria too. We could have done so much shit with it. It's whatever. Take it to Gladria, teleport over, like, teleport to the city, and then teleport out of the city. <laughs> start yeah. fucking with people. <laughs> you will literally start a freaking trolley. Hey, look, <laughs> if Argus was chaotic, he would have done it, okay? I mean, there's always the option to turn chaotic. Okay, so <laughs> one of my theories was confirmed, and okay, the one that I thought was less likely ended up being the one that I was actually okay, goddamn. Lawrence is a matriarch though. descendant? Yes. Well, somebody from the matriarchs. Well, somebody Jeez. from them. Yeah, a, a judge, jury, and executioner. That sounds pretty important. That sounds like a pretty high position. Yeah. I say, let's test it on a bug. <laughs> let's test it. You can do whatever you want with it. Blood. Looks, it looks to me that a, that, a, that a very influential drow stuck his little wiener in a place, and well, that's the rest of <laughs> history. <laughs> Is your father really your father, future fraud? Maybe he just adopted an abandoned child or something. Uh, this, Jesus Christ, come on. <laughs> uh, why everything has to be daddy issues? Uh, <laughs> because everything yeah. is daddy issues with us. <laughs> because why do you have to turn daddy. everything into daddy issues? Like, why do you have to turn everything into daddy issues now? Oh. There's only one daddy. character in this campaign that has had daddy issues for real. Uh, every, everybody had daddy issues. Every yeah. character. No, you, didn't, you, did not, you did not have daddy issues. You just, you Marcus know. Did. No, you didn't have daddy issues. Dad. You had issues with how your dad died, but not daddy issues. Should uh, you did have an argument with his dad before he died? You go right? back and read Argus's backstory. He had daddy issues. <laughs> he didn't have daddy issues. You're right. He didn't have you daddy know, issues all his life. But you had like normal father and son disagreements. Yeah. That's not daddy issues. <laughs> like, daddy issues is eighth. That's fucking daddy issues <laughs> yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> daddy, daddy issues right there. But. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Argus didn't have any that like, you have like disagreements and such. But you know, your father loved you yeah. very, very much. Damn. <laughs> and for all you know, Lawrence's dad loves him very, very much too. Yeah. Question loved mark. Him so much he left him on the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> question mark. Uh, <laughs> question mark. You. Yep. Sure. Oh boy. For example, Devon's father is like, Devon thought he also had that issue, but he didn't. No, no I, have, I, have, I have no future, more bad case, disagreements. In your, future, in your case, your father loved you just as much as he loved the arm that he took from you. 
Yeah, I will start the stream because it will start to get to record right now. <laughs> uh, but goddamn, so many sp 